Come to the edge. We might fall. Come to the edge. It's too high. Come to the edge. And they came, and we pushed, and they flew. Well, this isn't the first time that I've been in front of you all. Um, I was here for stool pigeons whenever we jumped on the stools. I've been here a couple of times for drama, and I've been in front of you to sing a couple of times. I can tell you it takes a lot of confidence to get up in front of people and perform, or just to talk to people. It takes a lot of guts to do that. But I'm confident that now I have this confidence, but I didn't always have this confidence. It's been a really long and winding road, and I don't think I've reached the end yet. When I was younger, I would have, uh, I would have liked to consider myself the strong and silent type, but really I was really shy, and I got overlooked a lot. Uh, I just followed orders and everything that I did, and I never took any risks, and I never asked the question why about anything. But the point where I started to creep toward the edge is whenever I joined band. Uh, whenever I would be drumming, uh, I no longer just followed the directions, I was exceeding them. I genuinely enjoyed what I was doing, and I loved it. So an example of that is uh, there was one time Dr. Crowder, our band director, he asked me to learn a certain section by the next day. So I learned that section, and three more after that, just because I loved what I was doing, so I was just gonna go ahead and keep on going. So naturally, with all that practice that I was doing, I became a whole lot better musician, and I passed all the people in my class, just gonna say that, for that out there. Um, but I became really skilled in what I was doing, so I ended up taking a risk, and I auditioned for the all district band in eighth grade, and what that is is, I think it's eight counties in our district, and all of these kids audition for one band. And uh, I got first chair, which is the equivalent of getting like first place in a sporting event. And that was huge for me. But in reality, talk about that edge again, it only pushed me a couple inches closer to the edge. Um, but through that, a bunch of the high schoolers saw my talent and they told me that I needed to audition for the drum line. And uh, in specific, they wanted me to audition for the snare line. And that's totally unheard of for a freshman because on a drum line, the snare drummers play the hardest part, and the tenors play the medium part, and the bass drummers the easiest part. And so that was ridiculous to ask of a freshman, but I decided I was gonna go for it. So I worked so ridiculously hard, and I put in so many hours in just a couple of months, but it all, it all paid off because I got the spot, and since then I've become the section leader of the drum line. I've been section leader for a couple of years now. Um, but still, in the grand scheme of things, that only pushed me just a little bit closer to the edge. I wasn't even to the edge yet. So after middle school, I mean, it's freshman year, first year of high school, and there's this one woman. Her name is Glenna Gardner. Um, she, uh, Glenna had just taken over the drama program whenever I was in eighth grade, and she did Cinderella and Hairspray whenever I was in eighth grade. And in the middle school, we got to go see Cinderella. And whenever we watched it, I just remember it blew me away. It was so cool. But since I was the strong and silent type, there's no way I was gonna put myself out there like that. But my sister, she had other plans for herself. She was a senior, and she decided that she wanted to be a part of the drama club. She wanted to be in Beauty and the Beast. That was the production. And since she was a senior and she drove to school every day, I rode with her. And so whenever vocal auditions came around for uh, drama, I had to wait in the auditorium, in the auditorium because she was my ride. And so, yeah. Pretty boring, not gonna lie. But then after all the auditions got over, Glenna was saying something about how she needed more male vocals and just more guys in drama in general. And my sweet, loving sister volunteered me. <laughs> you can imagine my agony. I mean, I just got pushed straight to the edge and I'm looking down at a 100 foot drop and my life is in the hands of Glenna Gardner. It was terrifying. So I didn't know what to sing because it was completely on the spot. So I just decided I was gonna sing a song that we sang at church a lot. And my whole body was trembling, my voice was shaking, my heart was about to beat out of my chest. It was just so ridiculous. I thought I sounded like a dying cat. But <laughs> once I got finished, she just smiled at me and said, well, where have you been? So that was uh, the beginning of my long journey in drama club. But I still hadn't gone over the edge. I got up to it, but nothing pushed me past it. So freshman year ends, and it's sophomore year for me. And Glenna announced that we were going to be doing Phantom of the Opera as our school musical. And if you know anything about musicals, Phantom of the Opera is a beast. And uh, a bunch of people told me that I needed to audition for the part of Raoul, which is one of the three leads. And 
his part is so hard, it's ridiculous, and I didn't have any confidence in myself, so there was no way I was going to do that. So I just decided I would just audition, sing a basic song, and let Glenna put me wherever she wanted me to go. But the day of vocal auditions, there was a conflict with band. I think I had rehearsal that day. So I went into the auditorium, and I told Glenna that I wouldn't be able to audition for her, and she just gave me this look. I can't even describe this. It was like a mix of hatred and admiration at the same time. But she just said, well, you can audition right now. So she took me to her office, locked the door so I couldn't get out, looked up on YouTube a song. I had to listen to it once, and then I sang it. And again, I thought I sounded like a dying cat. I thought it was the worst thing I'd ever done. But she just looks up and goes, hello, Ralph. <laughs> in, uh, in the poem Christopher Logue uh, wrote, it says, they pushed them off the edge. Well, Glenna just drop kicked me off the edge. Uh, I never thought that I was ever going to be a lead. And how was I, a sophomore nobody, with zero confidence in myself? How was I supposed to do something that hard? Well, she had faith in me, so I decided I had to do it. And being a lead is really, really stressful. It's really difficult. You have to memorize so many lines. You have to memorize your songs. You have to sing them well. You have to have good stage presence. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It's just a lot of stress. But I needed that. I needed that so much because I gained so much confidence in myself. I learned that I could do more than I ever thought that I could. I just had to try. And Glenn always talks about the box that people have. My box was this big before, and now it's this big. So Glenn is awesome. But my confidence grew so much that I decided I was going to audition for the all-state band, which is the same thing as all-district band, but it's all the kids in the state. And just to put this in perspective for you, for snare drummers and for clarinets, auditioning for Allstate is really different. They take 62 clarinets each year, but they only take 12 snare drummers each year. So the amount of competitiveness for the two spots is a lot higher for snare drummers. And uh, I just determined in my mind that if I worked hard enough, I would get in the band. So I worked for about an hour every single day for three months, and I got into the band as a sophomore. And in Barron County history, there have only been three to ever make the Allstate band as a sophomore, and I'm one of them now. Uh, I had come to the edge, Glenda drop kicked me off, but now I was flying. But it didn't end there, because I've continued to fly since then. Last year, I was in the Allstate band again, but this time uh, I was ranked the third best percussionist in the state of Kentucky. And uh, I've played other lead roles in our school drama productions. Like last year, I was the Scarecrow in Wizard of Oz. I've got the bruises to prove it. Um, I was Emmett in Legally Blonde, and also this past summer I attended the Governor Scholars Program at Bellarmine. Reagan was there too, so she's pretty awesome. Um, but now it's not a question of if I'm going to keep flying since I've been pushed off the edge. It's a question of how hard I'm going to work to continue flying higher than I have before. So to fly higher, I'm planning on going to college and uh, if I pass all my AP exams this year, I'll have 30 credit hours, which means I'll go into college as a sophomore. And um, I'm planning on majoring in theology and business, double majoring, and uh, also performing musical groups on campus, because I've got to keep music in there. So I have confidence in myself, and it's not because of the things that I've done, but it's how I got there. Because in every single thing that I've done, I had to put in the minutes and the hours and the days necessary to claim that as my own. And if I look back on all the stuff that I've done and I just say, oh man, I'm so awesome, then I'm going to miss out on a chance to make myself even better. So I come up with this theory that any single person, anywhere, if they work hard enough, can do absolutely anything. But someone's got to drop kick you off the edge sometime. And as William Jennings Bryan put it, the way to develop self-confidence is to do the thing you fear and get a record of successful experiences behind you.